Welcome to the Short Rod Show. You're talking with Ben. And you got Brett. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, we're on uh, Season 2, Episode 14, I believe. Jeez, I'm, I'm really glad that you're keeping count. I mean, I, I do edit the videos every se- every episode, but <laughs> I still forget what count I, I only on. keep track because it just pops up on my computer. <laughs> and then I can go, 13? Oh, oh, yeah, this is 14. Nice. <laughs> Here we go. Nice. So, yeah, we're about, uh, what, first part of February almost? Winding down on January. January. Yeah, we're, we're really, in Iowa, we're in the heart of our ice season right now. Yeah. This is the heart. Like, yep. yep. early ice is still like early January, end of December. The heart is between January and February, and you're going to start tailing off here at the end of February. Yep. Yep, that's uh, true. I mean, and our season is pretty short here Yep. Uh, compared to some other places, but yep. we make it work. We make yeah. the most of it. Yeah, well, that's what I let, I, had, I had mentioned this in the earlier se- episode, but... That's what I like about our, in Iowa, is you don't have to worry about that mid-season lull, mm-hmm. uh, where they talk about that, you know, you get up in northern Minnesota, North Dakota, and that sort of stuff where shit they're talking, now they're into 18, 20 inches of ice, oxygen levels start to low down, visibility's going to crap in, underneath mm-hmm. the ice and all that, you know, the fish just can't see because it's dark down there yep. and all this, and yep. uh, then they start to see that lull where, you know, you really got to start tuning into that live bait yeah. and all that, where now, I mean, just now, maybe last week, Maybe a little bit the week before fish are finally starting to set up where I would expect to find fish to be set up. And they are aggressive. Yep. They will come up, chase your bait, eat, do whatever you want them to do. Yeah, and like our midwinter is not really a midwinter. No. You know, compared to what other people feel like a midwinter might be. Like you yep. said, 18, compared to the ice inches belt. ice, uh, low oxygen levels, yep. uh, fish kind of getting tough, turning off a little bit. So, And that's really the niche that I wanted this podcast to fill was we're not fishing those minnesota glacial lakes we're sure. fishing iowa man-made dammed yep. up 125 acre lakes for mm-hmm. crappies and bluegills yep 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 definitely so the, uh that's just a little short uh intro about what we're uh dealing with here in iowa but you know you guys do a good job of keep commenting and sending us messages about how the ice is is uh out in your neck of the woods yep. you know we get a lot of a lot of messages from people asking questions and telling us about you know, I don't know, out west or out east, uh, up in Minnesota, Wisconsin, that kind of thing. So it's always cool to hear. It is interesting hearing from, so, you know, I guess when I think Ice Belt, I think like the Dakotas, mm-hmm. Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan. Yep. And we, I mean, we hear some from those folks, but we really hear from the folks that are on the either side of that. Mm-hmm. You get it out west into Colorado, uh, Montana, uh, yep. Wyoming area, and you get out east, out, out into the northeastern states. I mean, they have ice too, just as long, uh-huh. just as good as ice as anybody else. Sure, but they're they're kind of underrepresented, and uh, we were, I I enjoy hearing from those folks. I think it's pretty interesting yeah. what they have going on out there. I think it's cool for our listeners too, and people on Facebook to that follow along with us to see that kind of stuff too. Because yep, I mean we're not we're not huge trout fishermen, or we're not catching salmon, and we're not no. you know I've only caught up one in the mountains so far this year. Yeah, up in the mountains on some little you know speck of a, a lake that's not even named. So I'm starting to think maybe next year. That should be our early season trip. Ooh. Is a out, Colorado mountain out west. trip. Yep. Yep. Maybe do a family trip. That'd be pretty cool. I think I can get back at a fly on that. Yep. Yep. Hopefully by then the pandemic will be smoothed over a little bit. Uh, not too smooth though, because I still want flights to be pretty cheap. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Brett's hedging your bet. <laughs> yep. 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 Yeah, that would be pretty cool. And and it's it's a place where it's cool for non ice fishermen too. I mean Oh, yeah, and that's what I mean. Maybe it would be a cool family trip to Denver school. Yep. Hedge everybody. Or, you know, east, we got some folks in yep. New Hampshire and that sort of stuff that I yep. wouldn't mind going up that direction either. It would be about the same same kind of trip, basically. Yep. About the same distance. But anyway, rambling on. What are we talking about today, Brett? Uh, talking about today is kind of, I don't really know how exactly the best way to describe it, but uh Kind of the evolution of going for being uh, starting out as a beginner ice fisherman and evolving into an intermediate, mm-hmm. and then I don't know how to get past the intermediate because I've been stuck there my whole life. I, I think sometimes but, I feel like I'm just uh, a beginner. <laughs> obviously, some people are getting beyond the intermediate stage to more of an advanced angler. Um, just kind of talk about some of the differences, maybe how. Uh, if you feel like you've firmly got a good grasp on the beginner stage mm-hmm. and how, how to start advancing some of those skills. Yep. Um, and then also as a beginner, cause, uh, we've heard it's an unbelievable amount of folks have 
gotten yeah. on the ice for the first time this season. Uh, and it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, the, the bait shortages, the, the, all the pandemic just stuff, gear just, shortages. you know, pushing people out to do like a social distance activity, like ice fishing, fishing. Oh yeah, you know, uh, fishing in general is blown up. Uh, and then, you know, with that, there's a whole new audience of people that, you know, I would encourage you if you're, if you are a beginner, go back, listen to our first season. Yep. Um, you know, we really made that first season with beginners in mind, um, and wanted to lay out, you know, our style of fishing, yep. what we, uh, what we work on when we're out on the ice, how we operate. Um, and we've gotten tons of people that have messaged us and said, Hey, you know, I'm new to ice fishing, listen through your whole first season. And I went out with confidence. Yeah. You know, and it caught some fish. The most recent comment we've had on Apple Podcasts, that guy commented on that. He's like, hey, new to ice fishing, yep. listen to the podcast, applied some of your tactics, and had success. Yep. And that is just, boom, point, shot That's us cool. right yeah. in the target. Yeah. Bullseye. That was awesome. Yeah. That should just take our, our rating level on iTunes just all the way to the top. Yeah. I noticed we also got a, a four <laughs> star the other day also. <laughs> Somebody wasn't paying attention while they're listening. So now our tally is one three star, two four stars, and... 65 stars. Six, yeah, 60 or 63, <laughs> something like that. Yep. <laughs> That's how it goes. There's always that one guy. But uh, it might have been the same guy. It might have been. I don't know if he can rate more than once. Uh, maybe. Well, maybe he's got multiple accounts. But <laughs> kind of circling back. Um, a little bit, too, to start off. And it, what makes it, I feel like, getting into ice fishing uh, a little bit more daunting is when you just get sucked into social media. It's a freaking black yeah. hole sometimes. That, that's there's, a bear. There's yep. so much opportunity for learning and for it to be great. And then it's so easy to get sidetracked into the mm -hmm. shit. Yep. Yeah. And I feel like, um, you know, that kind of reflects our own personal lives and our experiences with social media because, um, you know, I was talking with you a little earlier, but you can, you can just go down the rabbit hole of social media and be in your own little newsfeed world. Oh yeah. And you know, not see stuff that's different and yep. new and you know, the not the good with the bad. It's more of you're seeing just all the all the crazy stuff, all the good pictures and uh, you know, people in their own personal lives, you know, just out there killing it every day. And then it makes you feel like, oh shoot, well what am I over here doing? What am yeah, I doing today? Yeah, okay, I see where you're going. You're you're going down another path. I'm like, where are oh, you going? Oh, I got here? lots of paths uh, to go down. Maybe you're going like down like a QAnon path here or something. But <laughs> we're not no, we're not getting into that. <laughs> uh, um, no, yeah, you're right. It's it's so easy to get sucked into saying to seeing, hey, oh this picture they've got a hundred bluegills. This picture they've caught all these yep. ten inch bluegills. This picture they caught all these walleyes. This picture they did all this. Yep. Those are different dudes. And you might, that might be the only fish that they caught that entire season. I mean, you, there's just not a lot of context, a lot of yeah. that, that social media yep. stuff. And the one thing, actually, there's one dude that has been crushing it. Uh, so I follow, being on the Short Rod Show stuff, just trying to push more of our stuff out on out into the interwebs. Mm -hmm. I'm on uh, higher than average. A, or high, a few uh, ice fishing groups. Ice fishing groups. <laughs> what I'd, than what I'd actually prefer to be on, but it's whatever. There's a dude in the Wisconsin ice fishing group. Fishes the Mississippi. No flashers or anything. Oh, like, gosh. he's just running his quad, digging holes and drilling yep. holes and yep. fishing like three, four, five feet of water. Go on. And is absolutely crushed every day. He's retired. He's got to be. Yeah. He's older and he's got to be retired. I don't know how else he would be out there every day. Absolutely crushing it. <laughs> but that's the only dude that I've seen. Yep. In all the, the, the social media crap that I follow on, that's the only dude that I yep. see every day posting. Yep. He's catching 10-inch gills. Uh, mag dog crappies. Those are the most of the only thing he catches. But well, yeah, he's he's, he's a crushing classic pan Some fisherman. Perch. Yeah, with just just out there. Yep. knows his stuff. Well, it's super cool because he keeps a wall of fame and his. He, he posts it, and uh, it's creepy just to even talk about. It, but uh, whatever. How many, uh, how many posts have you seen of? Oh, his? he posted like you said. He posts every day. <laughs> and Short Rod Show is a rising star, whatever that oh, means, okay. on uh, in the Wisconsin ice fishing group. But uh, so I get all that crap <laughs> on my feet all the time. But he's just, I mean, he posts a bunch. Of, I mean, he'll catch some smaller ones, but I mean, every day he's at least catching a 14 inch crappie or 10 inch yep. bluegill. And I'm just like, gosh, dang it, guy. Good but otherwise, man. it's all a bunch of crap. So he might be your more advanced angler then. Yeah. Yeah. He's definitely, <laughs> he's he's definitely in tune to something out there. Yeah, he's got he's the fish whisperer. Out. Yeah. He knows how they operate. But yeah, so. Um, you know, on social media, it's, it's a really good tool and I want to encourage everyone, especially as yeah. you're a beginner, there's a lot to learn, go out on social media 
uh, join some of the groups, you know, like Isaholics. That's a good group of, yeah, yeah. you know, a positive, uh, you know, it's a positive kind of leaning and group. There are some about, other groups that aren't as positive. Yeah. Um, and I feel like they aren't as moderated as well or, or they're moderated it? differently. Yeah. You, might, you know, the kind of the, the feel for the group. You're right. Um, but like the Isaholics group, shout out to Jesse, right? For, oh, for yeah, running that's that. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, he's, he's, sounds like a super cool dude. Uh, keeping keeping everybody going and involved and and you know positive. well they talk about very uh especially in that group they there's the topics that are there or maybe i don't know maybe jesse just sits through a pile of shit I and only does. posts the good i things, bet he does like butters <laughs> on uh south park yep. where he's just taking on all that crap but uh <laughs> they talk about very like pertinent information yeah. Like early season and kind of similar to what we did this podcast. They talk a lot about gear stuff. And then later season, they're talking about yep. uh, posts and stuff. And people go in depth about catching bluegills and they catch crappies and they catch all this. Yep. And, you know, where am I going? What am I doing? Uh, very like in the, t- in the time information. Mm-hmm. It's not like yep. going down a rabbit hole of just bitching yep. at each other. Yep. And I feel like too, when you're, when you're starting out as a beginner and we were all beginners once and it's easy to forget that. Definitely. You know, there's lots of stuff that this podcast has, has got us thinking about where we think about things from a different view and kind of different perspective now yep. when we're thinking about putting out content. You know, we want to we want to drill down and get, you know, get in real specific in the weeds on things. That's what I like about the um, podcast platform. But also still make it relevant for someone that's new and wants to learn that yep. um, and not take that for granted. But like when I was when I was a newbie, when I was a beginner, I mean... It was not uncommon to be out a couple times, three, four times, and not even yep. see a fish, catch a fish, you know, see anybody else catch a fish. I'm curious, Ben, when whatever. you were a newbie, how much homework did you do prior to going fishing on a body of water? Very little. Very little than none. You just showed up and you're like, I'm just going to dig some holes in. So I would actually used the uh, the DNR uh, email that came out. And okay. this was uh, back in my college days, so I'd get the email on a th- they released on a Thursday, right? So you can kind of plan your weekend, but still yeah, be a little yeah. relevant, right? Yeah. Um, look around and figure out, okay, what's this lake called? All right. I'll go Google it. See where it's at. Oh, yep. yeah, this looks cool. I could drive there within, you know, an hour or oh, yeah. hour and a half, whatever. Uh, so I'd load the little Cavalier up with the uh, ice shelter. Ooh, that, Cavi. That's what I'm talking about. Was yeah. it yellow? No, it was red. Dang it. All right. It was a two door. I like a nice yellow cat. And so that that ice, the shelter that I had, the the uh, fray bill, would yep. fit right in the back with the seat folded down. Oh yeah, all the way through the pass through. Yep. And I'd have to have the seat up, like three four three four clicks up. Oh oh, I see what you're talking about. Yep. To actually close the trunk. The front on. seat. Yeah. Oh yep. yeah. So anyway, I drive up somewhere. And I'd see a couple guys out, you know, I'd be like, oh, yeah, this will be, yeah, this is the, this will be good. This you is know, the spot. If, if there's two guys out on a lake, that's like. Something's going perfect. on Perfect, yeah, something's happening. Uh, I remember one trip I was on, probably not the, the smartest kind of trip, but I went up there by myself on a lake I'd never been on before in like. No homework. Late December. Yeah. Didn't know anything about anything. Didn't know anything other than the DNR said there's four to five inches ice. Okay. Well, okay so i go up there Jeez. no spud bar i'm just like punching holes kind of as i go with a hand auger so granted you don't really want to sit there punching a million holes to get out to where you want to fish yep um get my shelter set up i think i fished for two hours and ran out of propane go figure yeah, that's not a big deal got a little chilly yeah didn't see any fish of course because i didn't have a flasher either well you didn't know anything about it no nope. you didn't know how deep you were you i had my little depth you got weight. an idea but yeah that was it um and then I remember eating at Pizza Ranch on the way on the way back home because I was starved. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. I just hiked like <laughs> hauled all my gear in this yeah. lake, hiked on there, didn't catch anything. Yeah, hiked back I'm like dang, I'm going to Pizza Ranch. Yep, get some pizza and chicken. Well, see that that's kind of where my my question about doing some homework. Yeah, very uh, little. I did very little. Came would, across like you no. minimal gear. If you're it, mm-hmm. it's it's similar like anything else. You know, it's either you got the money or you got the labor or the time. Or the time. Just straight time to research. Yeah, well, labor. That's the labor part. Yeah, I got You either got the money or you got the labor. You got to do one of the two. You either got to do some research, or and you got to punch a ton of holes, and you got to do that, or you got yep. the money, and you got the equipment yep. to go find it for you. And then you hire a guide, and then they go put you on fish. Well, that's what I mean. <laughs> uh, so you can't. Yeah. You got to do something there. You got to. Yep. 
you got to go out and find and pre uh going to the water mm-hmm. uh anymore you can get on the internet and you can search up any body of water and yep. you can find some sort of information whether that's well, through the dnr whether that's through facebook yep. whether that's through anything you and can i find mean, some information i i was such a newbie i had no idea about that yep. i wasn't you know i'm sure the people that are listening now are kind of laughing in the background like oh yeah you weren't on ice ice fishing groups you weren't on whatever ice shanty on, uh, and yeah. all this, well ice shanty there you go like yeah. the old old school forums like they're still going strong yeah, that's, that um, if you want to go down strong. a rabbit hole uh side note for you forum guys ice shanty yep i mean in-depth outdoors has has a great forum too yep those are the Good two stuff. i'd say them yep. at least for what i do maybe yep. uh, comment wherever you're listening from if you yeah, use other more. forums for ice fishing besides yep. those two uh ice shanty though has a like a really good iowa specific page for yep. you know for the different it's ice very states. active oh yeah you can find the short rod show on there as well yes <laughs> you've made an appearance <laughs> yep it's pretty cool um but you know the other point i want to touch on with social media uh you know as i think back i mean i get i get snagged into uh, the mindset looking at different groups and different pictures. And, uh, there's a picture on the big Creek group, right. Of like 700 bluegills that a guy pulled out of a farm pond, right. With yeah, tons yeah, of yeah, other yeah, guys, yeah. you know, yeah. it's not, it, anybody that's fished big Creek would know that's instantly. They're like, yeah, this is, yeah, this that's is a farm real. pond. And this guy's just, you know, yeah. having fun trolling. And that was his intent too. It was just to, yeah, and he was, you know, he was have funny. fun he with it. Trying to be a jerk about it. Uh, other people keep people to be a jerk positive about it. About it. Um, yeah. But you know, if you're if you're a beginner, um, you know it it helps to go on those pages, search them, search them around, do your research, but also have somebody that maybe you can ask, yeah, bounce bounce some ideas off of, you know, like you do that for me all the time, where I'll I'll get confused about something and I'll ask you, and you're like, oh no, that's not what they meant. That's no, not, no, 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 we, yeah. we're not doing that. Uh, Usually, and, I have an answer. Yeah, yeah, and everybody needs something like that yeah. um, too with it, but. Uh, if you're a beginner and you want to go fish Big Creek, thinking you're going to reel in 700 bluegills, yep. you, you need to dig oh, a little deeper. Oh, you could certainly do it. You probably—they're not going to be that big. <laughs> they were monsters. We can go over to Gwen's meat hole and we can find <laughs> yep. them. We can find them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was mentioned on there. Oh yep. gosh, good stuff. But uh, yeah, I think we should. That'll lead us nicely into a little break here. Yeah. Uh, coming up here after the break, I think we're going to. Let's break down more of kind of a progression from yeah. a beginner to more of an intermediate yep. ice fisherman. I don't know. I can't go up, speak about the advanced, but well, sure. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll just have a little dream of what that is. Yeah. Maybe someday you just know <laughs> yeah. the bluegills are biting. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just get a dream. Yep. You got to go check them out. Cool. Well, that's coming up next on the Short Rod Show. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Thanks for joining us through the break. There uh, today, we're kind of talking through a progression of. Uh, Going from a beginner ice fisherman to the to the next level to the next level, yeah. Uh, kind of what that looks like uh, for all you beginners out there that maybe just started this season. You know what you can aspire to in the future. Yeah, Probably and it's not all year, gear. But, I mean, it's not yeah. like oh, how much money can I spend? Um, <clears throat> nope, it's definitely not. I think there's there's definitely opportunity for a guy to get to understand fish, fish behavior, where they're going to be, why they're going to be there. Yeah. Um, and then bring the gear along with you, I think, is the is the proper yeah. p- progression anyways. Yep. So uh, let's talk beginner ice fishermen, someone that, yep. that's never been out before, or maybe they went out with a friend, uh, kind of showed them the ropes a little bit, piqued their interest, um, and someone's deciding, hey, you know, this would be a good winter hobby for me. I got nothing better to do. Yep. I got money burning a hole in my pocket. There's plenty of time to spend on it. Yeah, so I think <laughs> diving I think in first thing to do would be to lean on your buddy that you took out the first time. There you go. Yep. Um, and see if they have any gear that you can borrow. There you go. Uh, yeah. Number two, we still do that. <laughs> We're still trading gear around as our definitely our group. Number that's, two would be best. so yeah. Let's start with the gear thing. Yeah. Okay. As a beginner guy, uh, I think the first. I mean, obviously, the first thing you do, you got to open a hole. You got to figure yes. out. You got to get a hole opened up. Yep. Uh, so you're going to need an auger. You can't just chip holes with your spud bar forever. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I hand augered for a long time. That hand really make just it, fine. It'll warm you yep. up. And there's there's what's good about hand augers. There's always people selling them. Yeah. Oh, you can. There's always cheap, people upgrading. Cheap, cheap. Well, um, and you're picking them. The up deal afterwards. is, you can buy the hand auger with the blades cheaper. A lot of times, and you can buy the blades, the yep. replacement blades. Yep. Yep. 
So, I mean, there's some value there. Yep, definitely. Hand auger for sure. That's getting you, getting you the actual access to the ice. You know, yep. if you go with a drill, you know, drill auger setup. Drill setup, all that. Um, yeah. That's you know, just another You're step probably up. not at this level just going to drop 500 bucks on a Strike Master 40 volt. But Nah, if you're beginning and you're not really 100% sure if you're going to be into it, if you're only going to get out one or two, three times a year, yep. it's not worth doing that. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then, Sorry about that. <laughs> and then uh, for as far as fishing gear goes, so once you get out there, would you are you a beginner type where you're wanting to run and gun move around not yes. have a shelter necessarily yes. not recommend that first um uh it's not that i wouldn't recommend getting a shelter i would definitely recommend getting a shelter on facebook okay. picking up a cheap yep used. you could buy used ones like everybody wants like you know like the ones we have with the sled and the shelter built in the pop-up sort of deal yep but you can buy those the the cheaper ones like what we used to have yep. with a with a stick frame and you got to build the whole sucker and it oh, blows yeah. across the water and yep. all that. Uh, I mean, I used that for a lot of years and it was great. I mean, mm-hmm. primarily I used it as the sled, mm-hmm. um, and then every once in a while if it was real bitter colder, I got on a bite. Um, I'd set it up, but uh, yeah, a sled, something to keep all your gear, and otherwise you're losing shit all the time. And yep, it's gone. Uh, Pop up shelter wouldn't be a bad idea yeah. either. The, Again, I'm, just the key yep. would be getting used. Yep. I wouldn't buy anything new if I was just starting. Yeah, definitely. And that that was my first shelter was a used one. You know, it was like eighty bucks. I think. Yep. I gave for it, and it was night and day. Like going from fishing with mediocre, you know, clothing. Yep. You're always getting wet. You're always, you know, you're always out on the coldest days of the year, and then going from that to having a shelter yeah. is, I mean, that kicks because it you haven't. In my mind, I guess, as a as someone that just started, you haven't made that investment in like a striker ice suit. No, I wouldn't. And I still haven't no. made that investment. No. I mean you're out there in car hearts at that point. Yeah, you're still I would say <laughs> that Walls. If if you're if you're a beginner ice fisherman, you're debating on spending some money. Yep. I would really think about getting pants like the pants though. Yes. Because at car hearts they yep. wick a lot of water up them. Mm-hmm. And that can be a problem. Yeah, you're constantly getting wet. Um, yep. Getting some float bibs, some sort of water resistant bibs, is kind of a big deal. Yep, keeping that water off you, especially as you get into seasons like now, mm-hmm. when you're starting to get quite a bit of snow on the ice. You get a lot of water and slush yep. and crap, and yeah, that's kind of a big deal. Um, yep. As far as like as rods and reel, reels go, I started with schoolie for sure. I still go with the schoolie. Brett's Ivy. all about the schoolies. We know that. Ten bucks. Well, I think they're twelve now. Yeah, man, you can even uh, buy those used. Buy People them online. Practically give them away. You dude. can buy them online easy enough. <laughs> uh, otherwise, Tyson's is the only place that I know yep. where to buy them from. In store, I haven't seen them. The the true schoolie. Now there's true. some knockoff ones they sell at. Well, those HT Fleet ones. Farm. Yeah, yeah, HT. Yeah, yeah, HT stuff. Yeah, that crap. <laughs> they don't have the same squeal to them. Nah, they don't squeak as good, and their their spring bobber isn't quite as good either. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's 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 a good beginner rod, and especially if you're taking kids out. Yeah, you know that sort of showing deal. someone how to how to do it. Very simple. You're not going to freeze it up. You're not going to no. break it. Well, and I mean, even the most advanced ice anglers are still using schooly reels. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know how you can say you, <laughs> you get away can't from screw that. it up. Yeah, I don't know why you get away <laughs> yep. from it. Yep. Uh, um, but otherwise, you know, a cheaper ice combo, that works too. Yeah. Um, it's just, uh, it's... Those the, cheap combos, I, know. I don't like them. I, they no, don't I'm, have any sensitivity. Their reels aren't yeah. very good. There's just nothing good about the them. The preloaded line they come with is Isn't very horrible. good. Yeah. I, would, I would tend to stay away yeah. from those. They're, but yeah. here's the other thing that we didn't really touch on, but buying a package deal from someone that's like heading south. Oh, yeah, that does happen a lot, yeah. You know, if if you can just get bucks out there and buy everything. Well, I was going to say like a hundred bucks. No, I meant like get real low. They have everything deal. in there. Yeah, yeah. That was one of our listeners mentioned that. Oh, Craigslisted, Facebook Marketplace, got all this, all this stuff for a hundred bucks. Oh, dang, nice. You know, like really, I don't know how he's he's master negotiator. I guess swindler. But, yeah, yeah exactly. I'm into swindler. that. <laughs> I'm into that. Yep, yeah, got everything for a hundred bucks. But that those kind of package deals comes up come up a lot because they do people retire or they want to move south well they just or, don't get out as much as they yeah did exactly or, yeah. yep so they're they're definitely out there um you know they usually pop up 
you know, either end of the ice season, that's a great time to look for, for yeah. a year too. So yeah. People realize, Hey, I didn't make it out this year. Yep. Yeah. I didn't make it out last year either. Yep. Let's just get rid of this stuff. Yep. Um, and I'm going to recommend a flasher for a beginner in, in my camp. Um, I didn't start with one, but I feel like my knowledge level and the experience that I would have yep. gained would have been a much steeper, you know, faster curve to yeah. get to where so I, I would know. i would agree some sort of electronics i wouldn't say necessarily you need to go buy a flash oh no yeah uh if some you own way a boat, to see the see the jig relative to the yeah. bottom if you own a fish. boat i'd recommend yeah. looking into whatever electronics maybe you have on a boat that you can pull off and apply to ice fishing just you can do some research sure. it'll be on there otherwise i've noticed there's those those deeper sonar things that you connect to your phone which yeah depending on where you live they can be all right yeah if you live in a warmer climate or a warmish southern climate you probably get by yep or i've noticed that there's a there's a uh, a deal on facebook that i keep popping up on my thing it's called hawkeye mm. ice electronics it's like a hundred bucks okay for basically it's like a little it's got a little screen and it, it's like a markham drop down or showdown okay yeah just but it's just a little different screen just a real cheap option there you go um i think they're originally made for kayaks yep but uh they're applicable in ice also. But, I mean, your success rate will be so much better. Oh, it with, goes up uh, times that. 100. You know, as far as scouting, yep. checking bottom, bottom composition, yep. figuring out where to fish, everything. And the value and the beauty of those flashers, yeah, you know, there can be some, it could be, you know, two, three hundred dollar five mm-hmm. five, up to $500 investment, but they really hold their value well. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, if you do in a year or two decide, hey, I haven't yep. gotten out in a while, life's yep. changed, things like that, yep. you can sell those again and probably bet you're not going to lose more than a hundred dollars yeah which is and people people will sell a 20 year old vexilar fl8 for 175 bucks oh gosh barely works (laughs) it's crazy yeah Yeah. transducer don't work yep yeah yeah they're nuts battery's 10 years old yeah good luck (laughs) that's my that's my best offer yep and i think that gets you on the ice bed absolutely hand auger yep rod Buy a combo pack of jigs and spoons. Yep. Um, and you're ready to rumble. Yep. Um, skill set for a beginner. Yep. Okay, that, that's something that, you know, you can't just, well, you can't be like me and just run out there on dumb luck and try and no, see, expect that's, to catch fish. That was the problem when when you went out there and you were like, oh, I just went out there because it said there's five inches of good ice, so I'm just mm-hmm. going to go. Yep. Um, if you would have done maybe a, just a hair bit more research, at least went to go find some brush piles. Uh, yep. See if the DNR had any options for that. Or the lake survey. Or see if you can find a lake map, yep. a printed lake map, just to give you an idea of what's going on out there. Because yep. um, otherwise, yeah, you just run out to frozen ice and you have no idea what the hell's oh, going yeah. on out there. Especially if you don't have a flasher. The only good part about that is it's an adventure. It's just nice to be out. It's just nice <laughs> to be out. Just, Classic. It makes my eye twitch every once in a while. <laughs> but, you know, there's when you're a beginner too you get just all jazzed up like you don't care you're like yep i'm getting out ice fishing then i can say i went ice fishing yeah had a good time did you catch anything well no not really well no but but, you know yeah but i want to take you from that's catch anything to yes i did catch things yes caught 700 bluegills oh yeah i'm not gonna guarantee you're gonna catch big fish but uh i'd like to think we could at least get you on fish Mm -hmm. um so yeah don't be afraid to exhaust those internet tools they're free they're readily available. Even yeah. if you're on the ice and you find yourself, man, I'm not finding anything. Hop on, hop on your phone. Yeah. Uh, whatever state you live in, DNR, and type in the num- the lake that you you're on, and you. Yep. I'd be shocked if you didn't find some sort of information. So, like uh, in Minnesota, that Lake Finder uh, app, the portion of that, amazing. Yep. Like yep. you can find every kind of. Okay, it was stocked. You know. 13 years ago with 40,000 bullhead that or, were four uh, inches long. Or know. it was stocked in 1991 by a guy that caught five walleye and released them into this pond with a, yes. in his bucket. <laughs> did you see that? No, that? no. What? Yeah, well, pond, it was up a hackensack. It's kind of, it was deep in the woods. It's just a little pond, and it said in the stocking report, uh, resident reported stocking five walleye that he put in there. <laughs> now that's great. That would only happen back then. Now yeah. he would be in deep shit. I was going to say, self-reported stocking. They're probably not yeah. going to want to yeah. call the DNR that's not and tell them they that. wouldn't know about, but I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> yep. But just having that, that kind of resource, that gets you yeah. that much further ahead towards catching fish. Yep. Um, the next thing I would say is, 
Yeah, so if you show up to a lake, so say, so look, you show up to like an Ankeny Pond, that's a different deal. You can kind of poke around and you can pretty, there's only a few spots mm-hmm. that you're really going to yeah. fish and you can pretty well find that as a beginner guy that maybe don't have the most high techy gear. Yeah, um, start small. You can be on a smaller pond. But I want to open it up a little bit, you know, like a lot of folks will go try to cut their teeth on Big Creek Ooh, or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And that's a tough deal. Um, even some of the most <laughs> advanced people have, have trouble out there. But what I would say is, yeah, go out there with being armed uh, with information yeah. um, prior to going out there. So you'll show up out there and you'll be attracted to the, the pods of people you see out there. You know, you'll see a yep. pot, 10 shacks in one area, 10 shacks in another, 10 shacks in another. And, yeah, you can go fish those. And then you can go not catch anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but then what? Yep. You know, you don't have any prior, you don't have any information. Yeah, those are the three spots. So, yeah. I mean, I've certainly gone out to lakes like that that are fairly pressured, and I've got, I've done my homework. I know on the lake map, you know, kind of where some drops are, drop-offs are that I want. I know uh, through the DNR uh, GPS atlas that uh, there's these couple brush piles mm-hmm. in the water range that I think fish should be yep. at. Um, but there's people on top of that one. There's people on top of this one. There's people on top of that one. Yeah. So that's A, B, C. Yep. Now let's go drop, try option D. Or E. And See, then I find out that I don't catch shit anyways. That's uh, then oh, we gotta man. go off the beaten path. Yeah. You are you are definitely the researcher and the, the let's figure out okay. Let's hold have on. a plan. Before, I'm all about before having a plan. we even leave. Yeah. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start on the north end and we're gonna hit this spot first and yep. we're gonna spend about half an hour there. If we don't see bluegills, you know, we don't see anything. Th- yeah, halfway through the water column, we're gonna skip and we're gonna bomb all the way across the lake. Well, that's what happened when we went up to uh, for the musky episode. Yeah. I mean, I had that exact plan. I'm yep. like, hey, I yep. sent an image of the lake to you guys <laughs> of the DNR lake map. Yep. And uh, I had, all right, well, so we're going to put in on this boat ramp. This is spot number one. Here's spot number two. Here's spot number three. Spot number four. Yep. On our way from spot number one to spot number two, I was like, you know what? There's a really steep break on the shoreline here. Let's go fish this. Yep. Boom. That was the spot we stopped at. That was we never it. really left. Yep. 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 So, but so you're, be you're so much that. more a planner on that than I am. Where yeah, I'm just I'm not going to just show up. I'm just going to show up. No. Absolutely. No, because then you don't have any clue what's going on, and you're just going to go fish with the folks, and I don't like doing. I've been that. told I'm a hell of a guide, though. I'm a hell of a guide. <laughs> I don't know. I think they're just being nice. That's because you bring a lot of snacks. Yeah, that's true. That's you're the snack man. Snacks are key. Yeah, that's yep. interme- that's an intermediate talk. <laughs> that, that, that's when you know you're intermediate. You're, don't you're worry about the, the snacks yet. Cooking on the ice snacks um also uh as a beginner ice fisherman understand that fish will tend to bite better in the early mornings yep. in the evenings uh going out yeah in at nine o'clock and fishing till noon is not necessarily going to be your best time to yep. catch fish yep. fishing from noon until three is not necessarily going to be your best time to fish uh try to pick time frame times throughout the day yep. uh that you can get out and actually Yep. Pick off fish when they're on the chew. Yeah, and, and definitely in weather, too. You know, everyone wants to get out when it's 35 degrees and sunny. No. Uh, some of the best fishing is when it's zero the degrees shit. and windy. Snowing. And snowing sleeting. like you couldn't believe. Raining, raining on you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not going out in the rain. <laughs> I'd go out in the rain again. We'll go out in the rain again. I mean, I will, but I don't like it. <laughs> if it was just me, I wouldn't be going out in the When rain. they tell you the otter's waterproof and then... You're just getting an inch of rain on it, and it's just pooling up and yeah. leaking through the seams. Yeah, yeah, because it's pooling up <laughs> it's on actually, there. That's rain. That's, that's the really problem, rain. yeah. Yep. I don't like rain in the winter. So uh, moving to like an intermediate type, yep. okay? I feel like we're we're kind of intermediates. I would, uh, yeah, I would think so. Uh, maybe, maybe on the upper end of intermediate. That would, yeah, just that would because, kill our cred here in the, on the podcast. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> don't mean to let you down but i feel like uh it, it's all in your mindset at that point of yep. how important is ice fishing to you okay yeah. are you going you know the the real advanced guys yeah maybe they're the retired guys that's their activity that's what they do from december until march or april right yep. they're ice fishing every day um you know they go out bright and early in the morning they don't come back till they get tired out they're just going at it yeah um you know once you if you're a beginner and you're just dabbling you know i'll go out every now and then it's cool whatever uh i think the difference with an intermediate angler would be you know we 
we we plan our lives around ice fishing to some degree well i have to otherwise i wouldn't be able to go <laughs> exactly i have to plan ahead <laughs> yes yeah yep but but we're thinking about it before the season starts and Definitely. we're getting revved up uh, we're putting out a podcast in November talking about yeah. being on the ice end of December. <laughs> yeah, that has been – I do enjoy that yep, actually a yep. lot. It gets you kind of revved up like you said. Yeah. Um, another thing I would mention with that is along with that mindset is so how do you know when you've gone from a beginner kind of ice fisherman and you're ready to kind of be a little bit more intermediate and maybe start helping guide some other folks that mm-hmm. are just starting to get into it and understand it is it's kind of when you start to kind of understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. Like – Oh, I'm fish, and and it'll be an epiphany. Like it, it's amazing <laughs> light when that light goes bulb off. goes off, and you're just like, "Holy shit! What have I been doing this whole time?" That happened this last weekend. Just just this last weekend for you, for me. I'm just joking. Oh, I was like, oh, <laughs> I, thought, I was like, man, wait, what? Wait, what did that happen? Those catfish. Because every once in a while, a light bulb still goes <laughs> off, and you're like, oh man. Um, and it'll be like, you'll get a light bulb that goes off. You're like, oh, this is why these fish are here at this time. This is why these fish are biting this yep. lure. This is why this is... And you'll start to connect those dots. And once you're able to start to connect a few dots of why you're getting on a bite, yeah. why you're finding fish, being able to apply that to another body of water and having success again, that's when you're just like, holy shit, we're on to something here, boys. Yep, now it's getting real. Yep. That's pretty cool. That's a good feeling. <laughs> yeah, that gets you pumped up. Man. And and basically, I mean, that's taking your success to the next level, and that's where, you know, yeah, those are the guys that might be posting on Facebook every day. Well, they're the guys that are uh, new new lake pounding them. Yes. New lake, new, lo- new, lake, new water, or fresh lake, new water. Fresh what, did, lake, what did you call first, that? What, what did we call it? Fresh lake, first ice. Yeah, 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 yeah. I tried to say that. That was it a great episode. <laughs> um, yeah, those, that, that's really when you're starting to be able to translate your skills to different, you know, in different ways throughout different conditions, different seasons, yep. Yep. everything. Um, that and that, too, that comes with time, though. And then, um, I mean, I guess I'm just going to make the, the leap that, uh, going from a beginner ice fisherman more to an intermediate ice fisherman, you've already made the investment in electronics. Mm-hmm. Is kind of being able to understand how those fish are behaving towards your bait. Yep. Um, yeah. I would the, say in the, the beginner zone, you're just wanting to find fish and getting a bait in front of fish. In as you move up, move on into your mm-hmm. fishing career, now you're figuring out what those fish want, not just hey, this is what I have. Yeah. What do they want? How do they want it? Um, I think yep. it's really a progression yeah, that's that you'll start point. to figure out. Um, and, and then as at that point, then we're in uncharted waters because I don't know anything after that point. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've heard, you know, interviews with really advanced anglers, and that's, yeah. the, you know, they talk about that, the kind of the light bulb moment of, okay, uh, once you figure out how to pattern fish yep. effectively, reliably, you know, time after time, that's when you're really the advanced fisherman where, um, you're able to go out and you can name the condition, name the kind of body of water, name the kind of fish that you want. And get. you have an idea where they're going to set up. And you're going to go, okay, uh, today, you know, the, the cold front just passed through. It's, you know, 60 degrees out. Wind's out of the south. Yeah. I'm going to go Wind fish. Wind doesn't make a difference ice fishing. This when point like first. Fish. Yeah. And, and then this point second. Yeah. And maybe they won't, they aren't on the, your first point. They're on your second point, and yeah. Uh, as you get into that, they'll be on that first point. They just won't be as big as you want them to be. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and once you start getting into that higher range, oh which I'm gosh. not into that yet. I'm, you're I'm, just, I'm, I can find the fish. They just might not as be as big as I want them to be. You're just being bored catching fish, and you want the uh, big ones. Well, then it's time to turn. Well, they'll get on that one. They'll be like, ah, oh, these I want bigger ones. So then they'll go to their next spot. Like, this should be a big fish spot, mm-hmm. not a school of dinkers. That's a good point is being able to figure out. All right, the active fish might be the small fish here. Yeah, being able to over select here, I want to get ones. you know. Hey, on this brush pile, there's a ton of bluegills, but they're all dinkers. How do I pick the five big? I'm going to go of out, here? you know, 15 feet to the east. Yep. In a little current channel with a little cut in the riverbed next to this rock. Yeah, that yeah, I, exactly. that I know, right? Yeah. And and catch them there. So maybe someday. 
Yeah, I'm tired of catching <laughs> dinkers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. Yeah, I think that that that'd be a sol- that's a solid progression there. But I mean, uh, to get to that point, you're talking some serious investment in time on the time water. on the water. Yeah, A- after that point, you can't. You, uh, sorry, guys, throwing this out there. You can't listen to our podcast and get to the advanced level. No, no, no. <laughs> Just listen. At to best, what, we're going to get you past beginner. Advice. Yeah. At yep. best. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, like I said. Yeah, and and that's really exactly what we've been talking about. Is yep. beginner is soaking up as much information outside, in yep. on the internet, on these podcasts, on YouTube or whatever, and then intermediate is actually putting that stuff into action. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and actually, you know, spending the time on the water, putting in the effort, and you know, doing kind of what's hard. I mean, that's the hard part. Yeah, the time on the water. Um, is a, you know, anybody can. can be hanging out at home while you're working watching youtube videos of ice fishermen yep (laughs) you know i'm trying to soak all that in and i guess that's kind of what we try to break down in this podcast is you know what is our time on the water what's our time on the water look like um and obviously it's not as complicated as it sounds yep because it's just oh drop the cadis down had a wax worm caught them all yeah that's (laughs) because we're on the spot on the spot but yeah finding the spot is the deal yeah Yep. But at the same time, it, it needs to be something you enjoy. And, yep. and sometimes it's easy to, to lose that too, where I feel like the last few times we've been out, when you talk about this, this, uh, weekend's trip, I'm like, yes, we're just going to go out. You know, we don't have to, we're not going to record necessarily. Oh, we're, we're not going to catch gonna, cats. Yeah. This we're not, weekend? Yeah, yeah, no, this upcoming weekend. Oh, upcoming like we're not going to okay. record. We're not, we're not pressured to do anything. Yep. We're just going to go out and have a good time. Yep. Like, there's gonna be a beer drinking. Yep, just episode. be a trip. Yeah, that'd be fun. So don't forget. And to then do the that weather too. might bonus yeah, a little we'll bit, see. but we'll, we'll see. see. Fair weather fisherman. <laughs> yeah, I'm a rain non rain fisherman. Yeah, we'll just I'll throw some plastic. Non rain ice. Fi- I'll go in the rain open water. Oh yeah, as long as there's no lightning, that yep. don't bother me. But yep. ice fishing in rain. Yeah, getting negative. wet is that's a negative yeah. in the cold, man. Yep. Maybe that clam suit will be. Maybe that'll be waterproof. <laughs> It might be, but I still don't want to be out there. Because then everything's frozen. It's supposed to drop down into the team. Oh, okay. Week yeah. after. I don't really want to That'd make for some out. cool pictures, though. Just freaking icicles the rain. hanging off the schoolie. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Cool. Yeah. We got I, anything else you want to add, Ben? I touched on some good stuff there. I, I think the... Yeah, I hope that it, that kind of gets people thinking about, you know, their next steps in yeah. their ice, in, not even ice fish, just fishing in general, uh, kind of your, your progression, yep. especially as you start out. Um, you may not have had those those light bulb moments. Yeah, and, and I feel like like what we talked about with social media, it, it makes it seem like it's everything's easy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Show up on Big Creek, catch a bunch of fish, go home, yep. post it on and Facebook. And I can say, <laughs> from my own experience, a, a real light bulb moment that went off for me was fishing too fast mm-hmm. i had found myself especially open water for this one particularly but uh slow it down make sure you you keep that yep. lure in the strike zone rather than casting out there burning cover and water yep. was making sure you cover the water that you are covering covering it well yep uh was one thing that was kind of a a light bulb opening yep. moment for me and the other thing too is is just being around other anglers and seeing that um, you know, they're probably not catching a whole lot of you. No, they ain't catching. If you're shit. not, if you're not catching anything, chances are most other people on that lake are not catching anything. Yeah, that <laughs> actually, that's light bulb number number two yep. was when I realized that. Uh, man, I had a hell of, a hell of a day out there. A tough day, and then you get up, like like we said at the beginning of the podcast. Yep. Oh, we saw all this social media crap that people are catching all these bluegills and all this stuff, and I'm like, man, I didn't catch shit today. Odds are nobody else caught anything. It was just that one. Just guy that one guy caught that yep. one. Yep. Got on the one school, and he's he was either really lucky or he's mostly lucky. Had it figured out, probably lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yep, awesome, cool. Well, we still got some more uh, ice season left this year. Definitely, uh, hopefully, like we got said, a good we're, month we're right in the heart heart of it right now. Yep. Um, you know, we'll be putting out episodes for sure every Sunday. Yep. Um, keeping you guys entertained through the ice season, hopefully. And actually, all I've been thinking about since that catfishing episode was those cat hot catfish sandwiches. Oh yeah, I'm man! That'd oh, be good. pumped! I'm yep. freaking pumped for a fish sandwich. Yeah, so we we should do a little chat about the uh, cooking method. Yeah, we're gonna have to. Well, what we're gonna have to do is figure out how to bring it live. We're gonna have to figure out how to get this camera rolling while we're cooking. All right, cook it in that. the kitchen with Ben. 
We'll figure it out. With Ben and Brett. Yep. <laughs> That'd be cool. Awesome. All right. Well, cool, guys. We'll catch you next time on The Short Rod Show.